Hi guys, welcome back to the Chromark Studio in beautiful Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. We're here today to do part two of our cat climber game. If you missed the tutorial for part one, you can find it on YouTube, on, on my YouTube channel, Chromeworks Tech Training. And you can find the links to that on my website, which is chromeworks.ca slash lessons. Um, so go ahead and update yourself on part one if, you, uh, if you're catching this in the middle. If you're impatient and you just want to start coding, you can also download uh, the code, all the code for part one already completed on in my Remix Studio, which you'll find a link to on my website as well. So you can get all the code up until this point um, and then just continue adding to that. Or you can get the completed game there as well. If you just want to follow along and look while I do the coding, that's perfectly acceptable as well. The idea here is to be learning as I build the code, and it's not necessarily about you building it yourself right now. The idea is to watch what I'm doing and listen to my explanation of the, how the blocks work and learn a little bit more about Scratch. Okay, so um, we're, let's go see what we did in part one. So in part one, we programmed our cat. He's uh, This is an endless scrolling game, so he's going to be sitting in the middle of the screen while the background moves. Um, and so uh, the only thing that, he, that our cat can control is his left and right movements, which we do with our arrow keys or with A and D. And we um, make ourselves move upward by bouncing off of bats. So today we're going to be programming the bats. Uh, but let's have a look at how our code is working so far. We've got a sky background here that's tiling itself. And um, in part one, we explained how to do that. And we also have our city background that will appear only when we're close to the ground, basically. Otherwise, we won't be seeing it at all. And our sky, of course, gets darker as we get higher up in the air. And we did that with some brightness settings um, uh, in part one as well. So... Um, if you want to find out how to do that again, go back to part one. So let's get going here, guys. We're going to start programming. Well, actually, let's have a look at what our game looks like up until this point. So when I click the green flag, you can see I start off by jumping in the air, and then I fall, and then eventually I fall below the ground because I don't have a death event yet. Uh, we can simulate jumping up by uh, clicking on this block here that says when I receive cat bounce triggered. This is what the cat's gonna do when he bumps into a bat. And you can see that every time that I click on that, I get another little jolt upwards again. And that will keep me moving upwards as long as I can keep finding new bats to hit. So we're gonna be creating or generating new bats as the game progresses here. And we've gotta do that inside our bat sprite. So let's click on that and get to work here. Okay, so uh, let's start by initializing some variables like we usually do with these uh, objects. I'm going to go when green flag clicked. Let's magnify the screen a little bit here. Um, we've got some variables here that control what the bat does. The first one is called uh, bat is upside down. So we're going to set that variable bat is upside down to zero, meaning the bat is not upside down by default. The upside down bats are going to be bats that push you down instead of pushing you up. The uh, gray bats are going to push you upwards when you strike them. You can jump off of them. But when you hit a black bat, it uh, you'll just bounce off of it and it will give you some acceleration in the downward direction. And that's how that's going to work. We also have a variable here called set bat is clone. Bat is clone. We're going to set that, that to zero because, of course, our default bat is... Um, not a clone. Now the reason we're doing this is because later on in the game we're going to be generating new bats. But the problem is uh, every time we create a clone of myself, we're actually all the clones will also create clones of themselves and we'll get into kind of a sorcerer's apprentice kind of situation where one guy is creating two guys that creates four guys that creates 16 guys and eventually our game will crash because we have so many bats on the screen. So we want to make it so that only the original bat can make copies of himself. And um, so that's why we're setting up this variable here so that, so that the code always knows that only the original bat is allowed to do the creation of clones. Okay, uh, we're going to send them to the middle. So that's where we're going to be generating our new bats is right in the middle of the screen. Let's go to our motion blocks. 
We'll say go to zero, zero. That happens to be where he is already. If we just click the eyeball here to make him appear, you'll see that the bat is already set up to go in the middle of the screen here. And we're just gonna reposition him randomly as the game progresses. Okay, when we click to move the cat out of the way, we actually selected the cat sprite here, which means I'm coding the cat again. We don't wanna be doing that. This happens to be from time to time. So um, let's make sure we're coding the right thing. We'll click back on our bat and we'll move on from there. Um, okay. So uh, we want our master bat to be hidden. We don't want him to actually be visible. He's gonna be sitting there in the background invisibly creating new bats. So let's go to our looks commands here. We'll grab a hide and we'll pop that in there. Um, now we're gonna set a variable called bat height. Let's go to our variables, set bat height to minus 120. Why minus 120? Well, we're gonna be setting our bat height to our own height uh, and a little bit below where we are. So initially when, when our height is at um, 100, our, this minus 120 is gonna position the bat a little bit lower than we are so that we'll actually have something to jump on. It'll be about 220 pixels below us. And um, that's the way they're always gonna set up, which will give you enough time to actually position yourself on top of the bat so that you can bounce off of it before something nasty happens. Okay, um, now we wanna create three clones of ourselves here. We could pu put this inside of a loop, but I'm just gonna go ahead and um, just to add that block three times. It's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, which way you want to do this. So I'm going to go create clone of myself, create clone of myself, create clone of myself. There we go. We're going to create three bats at the beginning of the game. So we have lots of stuff to land on until you get going in the game. Later on, as we create new bats, we're going to create them two at a time. So that any t place you are on the screen, there will always be at least one bat that you can um, jump off of and perhaps one more black bat as well or perhaps two light bats or one light bat and one dark bat is the way it's going to be um, the way that we have this set up right now okay so uh, we created our clones now we need to give our clones their instructions there's going to be two sets of commands here um, controlling our bat movements and then some other branching bits of code that do some other specific stuff but the main blocks of code are the first one that's going to get the animation working, and then the second one's going to control the uh, the movement of the bats and um, whether they get hit, what happens when they get hit by a cat, basically. So let's do the easy one first. Um, we're going to go uh, add a, let me just find the right spot in my reference code here. There we go. So let's do the animation for the bats first. Remember that we can't put the animation and the movement into the same block of code. Otherwise, they'll interfere with each other. Your code will move and then change costume and then move and then change costume and move and then change costume. And it'll appear jerky as you're moving along here. So we want the, the animation to move smoothly, which means that uh, we, pu uh, we put it into its own block of code that's gonna run in parallel at the same time as the movement code and then I'll make sure everything looks really smooth in your game. So let's go ahead uh, to our control blocks and grab a when I start the clone. We're gonna put a forever down there because we want our characters to constantly be changing animations. Now the delay in the animation here is gonna be just 0 0.15 seconds. So that's, gonna, that's the speed at which it's gonna be flapping its wings. We played with a couple of settings and that seemed to be the most natural looking speed. Okay, so there's actually four different costumes that our bat can go through, but we only want it cycling through bat A and bat B. We're going to be using the other costumes for different purposes. So we can't use the tried and trusty next costume command here. That's not going to work. We have to find a way to get our code working so that we only go between bat A and bat B. Um, let's put an if statement in here, and I'll show you how this is going to work. It's actually going to be an if else statement. So... Here we go. We're going to say if we're wearing the first costume. So we're going to say if costume number equals one. So let's grab an equal sign from our operators here. And we're going to say costume number. That's under looks. Towards the bottom here, there's a little block, a uh, round block here. You can see it has rounded edges, which means we could pop it into this hole. If costume number equals one, 
Then we're going to switch costume to bat B. So switch costume to bat B. So if we're wearing costume one, we'll switch to costume two. Otherwise, if costume number, we're going to put another if statement in here. Now we, we have to actually specify the costume number here. Normally we'd be able to say, if it's not one, then of course it's two, duh. So we'll just, we could just say switch to costume A. That will work under certain circumstances, but later on when our bat becomes a falling bat, we don't want it to switch back to costume A. So the only time he's gonna be allowed to switch back to costume A is if he's in costume B already. That's why we need the second if statement here. So I'm gonna grab uh, this whole if statement is equal to, actually, rather than reinventing the wheel here, I'm gonna move my cursor over the equal sign and go duplicate. Remember that's a right click with your keypad if you're on a Chromebook and you're pressing the keypad. Otherwise, you can just right click with your mouse if you have one. So if costume number equals two, then we'll just switch our costume back to costume A. So I'm just gonna duplicate this instead of looking for it again costume A. So this is just going to cycle us between our bat costumes. You can see it's already working here. I have, I've already clicked and there we go. I'm cycling between the costumes. And so if I change my costume to a different costume now, let's go ahead and change it to costume three, for example. Now it freezes. The, cost, the costume change isn't working anymore because it's looking to see if we're in costume one or costume two. So um, that's a really clever way to get your costume changes to be working properly. Good. All right. So I think we uh, have to go ahead and change that costume back to one again. That'll be happening in the code automatically at some point, but or have we done that yet? No, we haven't. So um, let's just, to be care cautious, we'll just switch our costume back to bat A and continue coding here. So we've got the animation working properly. As I said earlier, we need a second block of code here that controls the movement for our, uh, for our bats. So let's go ahead and do another when I start as a clone. Now, the first thing we're gonna do here is switch our costume to costume A. We could have done that in the other when I started the clone, I guess, but let's just stick with what's in the documentation. Switch costume to bat A. Now here's what we're gonna be using that bat is a clone variable. So we're gonna set a variable here called, um, called bat is clone. Variables set bat is clone to one and so the code will now know that this guy is a clone now the an important thing to know about this um uh, uh, bat is clone variables it's a local variable not a global variable that means that each of the clones has his own variable and the master clone also has his variable if you're doing anything like hit points in a game or anything else where you've got multiple clones and they have different attributes from each other when you go and create the variable you have to go ahead and make sure that you clicked for this sprite only. So that applies to clones as well. So clones can each have their own version of, of this variable. And so the master one will remain at zero and the clones will all be set up for one now, which is the way we want it. Okay, so uh, let's go tell this guy to, um, to maintain. The, these bats are basically gonna stay at the height where they were created and move from side to side. So let's lock them to the camera view, to the, to, the view, to the view that we're looking at our cat from so that they move up and down as our cat moves up and down as well. Let's do go to XY, we'll go to our motion blocks. We'll go go to an XY coordinate. Now our X position to start with is gonna be random. We're gonna go somewhere towards the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen. The number we're gonna put there is a random number. Let's go to our operators. We'll go pick random number. We want the farthest to the left that they can start off as minus 150, which is 150 pixels to the left of the start position, right around here-ish. That's where our first bat's gonna appear and they can go all the way to 150, which is over here. We don't want them right at the edge of the screen. Uh, so we're just gonna have them go kind of at a random spot, somewhere between these two spots. I know I'm clicking on the cat rather than the bat, but you get the idea, our bat's hidden right now. Um, all right, pick random from minus 150 to 150. 
Now our y, we're going to be using the same formula we used for our city skyline and for a cat as well. We're going to go um, its height minus the player height. So let's grab a minus sign here from our operators. And we'll put two variables in here, bat height minus player height. So we're, uh, our bat is going to go up and down based on where our player is. And the same with our background. You may recall our background is also being changed by the player height. So the higher our player is, the uh, more that uh, our sky and our city are going to move down. It's all linked into this camera view, uh, as we say in coding. Um, the, the camera is following the cat. Rather, normally in a typical platformer game or whatever, the camera is fixed in a certain location, but we have a moving camera here so that the, so that the camera is always looking at where the cat is. And no matter how high or how low we get, it'll be centered on the cat, which means that our view will always have the cat in the middle of it, which means we don't really have to move our cat up and down at all. Okay, we're not going to test our bats quite yet. They're still invisible, so there's nothing to see. We're just going to add one other little bit of code here that tells them um, whether they're moving to the left or to the right. Now, they're not going to. That's not going to start working right now. We're just going to set their direction, and their movement will happen later. But we've got to get that code set up. So let's go ahead and go control. We're going to do an if else in here again. And we're going to just basically flip a coin. We do that by picking a random number and saying if it's two, then um, we're gonna do one thing, and if it's one, we'll do another thing, right? Since this is an if else, we only have to control for one of these conditions. So let's go grab an equal sign, and we'll pop it into here. And uh, now we'll say if our random number, so let's pick a random number, we're gonna put it inside that left bubble. We're gonna pick a number from one to two, and we'll say if it's two, if it comes up heads, or tails or whatever you want to call it. We're going to set our movement direction. So let's go, um, we've got a variable in here called bat movement direction. We're going to set that variable to 90, which is 90 degrees to make it move right. And if it comes up one, if our random number comes up one, we're going to go to the else condition because it's not two, so it'll ignore what's here and do what's here, which is the way the if else statements work. We're gonna set that variable, let me just duplicate this, set bat, bat movement direction to, we could say minus 90, which is left, or we can say 270, both of those basically being the same thing. I'm gonna stick what's in the, with what's in the documentation. Okay, uh, those sharp-eyed viewers who uh, catch continuity errors might notice that I'm not wearing my headphones anymore. I just stopped the video and took them off. I realized um, that I don't actually have to be wearing them anymore. Right now, when I'm live streaming, I need to hear people talk to me over Discord. But uh, when I'm just recording my videos the way I am right now, I don't need to be wearing them. So that's how they suddenly disappeared. Anyway, I took them off while I paused the video. Okay, so I lied earlier when I said there was uh, two blocks of commands that would control how things work. Um, this uh, part uh, of the code that we're working on here controls the movement of the bats from left to right, but it doesn't lock their movement to the camera view, and that's what we're gonna be doing in a little bit, but we might as well carry on finishing this. So there's not much to test right now. You'll see that, um, our bats are all showing up at the bottom of the screen. Let's just start the game. We're not gonna see very much right now, but you can see that the three bats at the start of the game, they're locked to the, uh, the view. They're the, they're the exact same distance as our, um, play, as our player is, and they always stay the same distance away. So we're gonna have to do some math to have them um, stay locked to the world instead of to the camera view here. We're gonna be doing that in a second. But in the meantime, we've got our guys flapping their wings right now as they're created at the bottom of the screen. We're gonna want them to, um, to fly to the left and to the right. And that's what we're gonna work on next. Um, and then we'll get them to affix themselves to the camera. Okay, so um, to do that, right underneath our show block here, we're going to add a forever. inside there. Now we're going to get our guys to move uh, to the left or to the right, depending on how they, uh, what 
choice they made in that random coin flip we did a minute ago. Uh, but the problem is that um, we can't, their, their direction isn't, um, isn't predictable because when they bounce off of a wall, they're going to start moving in the opposite direction. So this variable we set here, bat movement direction, is in the end not going to be able to keep track of whether our bat is moving to the left or to the right because at some point we'll switch directions. So we have to do a little bit of tricky coding here to make sure our bats keep moving in the same direction that they were moving in last time we went around this loop. I'll explain it to you as we go along here. So inside the forever here, we're going to point in direction. Let's go movement, point in direction. We don't want to point in a fixed direction. We want to point in the direction that we moved with a coin flip here. So let's go ahead and put that variable in there. We'll go uh, bat movement direction and pop that into that hole there. And now we're going to tell them to start moving. They're just going to move at a speed of three. So let's go move three steps. Notice we're not changing their X here because we want them to move in the direction that they're facing, right? So we're going to go move instead, three steps. We're going to tell them to bounce if they hit a wall. So we'll go if on edge, bounce. And here's where they might change direction and where that bat movement direction isn't going to work anymore. Then we are going to set the movement direction. So let's go ahead, let's go to our variables, set movement direction. So we're going to reset this variable to the direction that we're moving in right now so that the coin flipper is no longer relevant. It'll now remember where we were based on the direction we were moving last time we came around this loop. So inside this hole where the zero is, we're going to grab a block that says what direction we're currently moving in. Let's go to our motion blocks. And here's our direction bubble. If I click on it right now, you'll see where the default direction is 90 and that's the way we're moving right now. So that will store whatever direction it was moving in when it moved here, and we'll set it back into that bat movement direction. Sorry, I didn't change the name of this. Bat movement direction. There we go. And uh, that part's good. Now we need an if-else statement in here. Now here's what we're going to determine uh, uh, what the bat looks like if it's upside down. So um, remember, the, the upside down bats are going to push them the opposite direction, right? So we're going to need to um, to say if the bat's upside down, it needs to look a little bit differently. So we're going to control for that in here. Let's grab an equal sign from our operators, which is right here. And we're going to say if bat upside down is equal to 1, let's find that variable in our variables here. If bat upside down is equal to 1, we're going to pick that later, whether the bat is upside down or not. We'll be, we point in a direction minus 90. Okay, so we're going to have them always moving to the left if they're black. And so the way that this works basically is we want our two bats to not be overlapping each other. When we create two bats, we want the one who, um, the, the, the up bat, the gray bat, to be far away from the first one. So, so we have to make sure here that our bats um, are moving in opposite directions. We go point to the left if you're a black bat. Otherwise, point in direction right. So this will control their movement to make sure they're not moving in the same direction. Uh, inside the if statement here, we also want to make our black bat look like black bat. So we're going to change their brightness here. So right underneath this point in direction minus 90, let's go to our looks menu. We'll grab a set color effect and we're going to change it to set brightness. And we want it to be fairly dark. So I'll go minus 60. We don't want to be totally black because when the sky gets really dark, we want them to be hard to see, but not impossible to see. So, so basically the regular part of the bat will be black under these settings, but their wings will still be visible. Let me give you a little preview of that. I'm going to show my bat on the screen here. I'll just move it off to the side a little bit here. And so when I, um, when I set my brightness effect to minus 60, they will turn quite dark. But as you can see, so it's hard to see here. Let me zoom in a little bit. 
you'll see that their wings will still be kind of a light gray color. Even though their bodies are black, their wings are light gray. And you should be able to see those even against the um, dark background. So this is just one of those little effects I'm adding to make the game a little bit harder. When you start to succeed and do really well, it's going to be up in the dark where it's going to be hard to see these black bats. Okay, set brightness to minus 60. We'll pause back in that hole. Okay, we're ready to test out our uh, bats and see them moving left and right. Um, the uh, locking to the camera hasn't been done yet, so we're not quite there yet, but let's have a look at where we are right now. You can see our bats are bouncing off of the walls. And there's some stuff happening here, but not the way we expect it to. So let's uh, go ahead and attach them to the camera. It's just a very simple little bit of code here. We're going to um, add another when I started the clone here. Let's go to control when I start as a clone. Let's do a forever. And here's what we're going to do the same thing we did inside the city and inside the sky. We're going to subtract it from the, sorry, we're going to subtract our height or the player height from our height. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll set our Y position, tell our thing how high it is on the screen. Let's go to our motion blocks. We'll set our Y. Two, we need to do subtraction here, so let's go grab our minus and pop that in there. And we'll go to our variables, and so we'll say bat height minus player height. Bat height minus player height. There we go. Uh, and so now this should more or less be working. Let's click the green flag. Now, uh, at the beginning of the game, let me stop for a second, the bats are down at the bottom. They actually, since we're being shot upwards, they're at the bottom of the screen. They can't go completely off the screen, so they're kind of floating along the bottom here. When we actually um, get to the height where they're a proper distance, so when they are more than this far away from each other, they will continue to hover at the bottom of the screen, which is kind of annoying. We're going to need them to hide so that they only start moving up and down the screen when we're actually um, less than this distance away from them. We're going to do a little bit of code in a second to fix that problem. But for right now, you need to kind of use your imagination. Imagine these um, bats aren't here until they start moving upwards, and then they're actually going to be locked to the camera until they get to the top. And then, again, they'll be hovering around the top again. Let's check that out. So we go up. And now here they are, they're attached to the camera, and now they're not attached to the camera, they've fallen off again. Okay, so we just need to add a little bit more code to make them hide whenever they get off screen. When they get too low or too high on the screen, we're just gonna have them hide. So um, we're gonna add an if statement inside of this when I started the clone. And we're gonna say if we're too high or too low, so this is uh, a, quite a bit of code we're gonna do here. We're gonna go, go grab our operators. We'll grab an or sign. We're gonna say if, if either of these things are true. Now we need to say if we're too high, if we're off the screen. So we need to say we're, we're looking at our Y position. So let's, we're gonna grab a less than sign and a greater than sign. I'll put the left, the less than sign on the left side and the greater than sign on the right side. And we're gonna, we're gonna be checking our Y position in both these cases. So let's go to our motion blocks. We'll grab the Y position bubble and put it in both left sides. And so we'll say if our Y position is less than minus 179, remember our screen is 360, which um, pixels across, meaning, at the, meaning 180 uh, off of so 180 below, minus 180, or 180 above. So as soon as we're past minus 179, we know that we'll be off the bottom of the screen, then we can hide. Or as soon as we're above 179, then we can hide again. And, oh darn it, I forgot. This is supposed to be an if-else command. Let's go ahead and change that to an if-else. And we'll just drop that in there. This is something I do every week, at least once. You guys will be disappointed if I didn't. There we go. All right, if our Y position is uh, within those constraints, if it's le uh, then which, which means it's off the screen, then we're gonna hide. Let's go to our looks commands. We'll say hide. Otherwise, we know that it's within the visible area, then it's gonna show 
Okay, so we haven't changed anything else. We're just changing the show and hide, but you'll see that this makes a lot more sense now. When I click the green flag, we don't see bats at all until suddenly we do see bats, and then they go, whoa, way off the screen, and they disappear again. Okay, we still can't change our height very much. We can simulate it, of course, by going back to our cat and clicking on this when I receive cat bounce triggered. Let's have a look at that and see what this looks like now. So imagine we bump into a bat. Every time we bump into a bat, we go up, and then the bats are waiting for us down below until we bounce off the next one. And new bats will be appearing up here that we can bounce off of. And the idea is there will always be a few new bats to get us up to the next level if we catch them, and if we can avoid the other bats. So those three bats are still waiting for us, but they're way down below here. We skip right past them. I can't even see them anymore. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, I think we're ready to move on here. So, um, okay, so uh, rather than simulating the bat collisions, let's go ahead and actually do the bat collisions now. We're going to have to go back to um, this main block of bat code, the big long block that we've been working on here. We're going to, right underneath this if on edge bounce here, we're going to test for collision with the bat. Now, there's quite a bit of code involved here about what happens when we touch a bat. Um, the bats are going to shrivel up into a little ball and then fall off the screen, basically, and die um, when we bounce off of them once. So um, in order to make that work, we are going to um, have to do quite a bit of code. So we're going to use a custom block here. We're going to create one block here that just says check for collision. And we're going to do all the rest of this code over in a separate area just to keep everything tidy. So I'm going to go to my blocks and I'm going to click on make a block. There's no parameters necessary here. You know, you'll know what parameters are if you saw last week's lesson. But uh, let's type in just a name here, check for bat collision. There we go. And we'll go OK. All right. So now I have a block here that says define check for bat collision. And I have a new block that says check for bat collision. So let's insert this one right below if on edge bounce. There we go. And so every time we go around this loop, we're going to check for bat collision. It's going to do all of this code to, to uh, see if, um, if we've collided and also to do something if we collide. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab an if statement in here. We don't need to put it in another forever because we're still inside this forever loop going around this loop. We're just taking a little detour. So we'll grab an if here. We'll say if touching cat. We need our senses to know if we touch something. So I'll go grab this block here that says touching mouse pointer. And I'll drop into the hole. And I can change that to the name of any of the sprites in the game. I'll change that to cat. So if I'm touching the cat, then... We're going to do a bunch of stuff. First, we're going to check and see if the bat's upside down, because that's going to determine what happens here, of course. So I'm going to grab an if else statement here. And I'm going to say if bat is upside down is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and grab an equal sign. And we'll go ahead and grab a variable bubble that says bat is upside down. So if bat is upside down equals 1, which means it is upside down, then we're going to broadcast a message. Let's go to our control or our events blocks, and we'll broadcast a, a message called um, cat bounce down or cat bounce triggered down. Let's do that. New message, cat bounce triggered down. There we go. So we've already got the up bounce set up here, but now we have a new event for the down bounce. So we'll have to do some different code there. Otherwise, we're going to broadcast that cat bounce triggered that makes us go up. So when we start this code off, we're going to determine whether we're upside down or not, and we're going to trigger an extra little block of code here that makes us bounce up or bounce, that makes our cat bounce up or bounce down. Meanwhile, no matter what happens here, no matter whether this is true or not, we still need to um, to have the bat go through his little death animation. Because regardless of what kind of bat he is, you can only use him once, and then after that he'll fall and die. So let's go ahead and do that code here outside. So we're still inside the first if statement, but outside the if else. So we're 
putting our code right into this slot here and right underneath the else statement. So the first thing we want to do is point in direction right, point in direction 90. We're going to switch our costume to a different costume, Bat C. So that one, he has kind of a pained expression on his face. His eyes are closed, and that will work quite nicely for him getting hit by us. He was a little disappointed by that. Let's go to our looks menu here, and we'll go switch costume to Bat C. Then we're going to, we just want to leave that on the screen long enough for you to register that it happened, and then we're going to go into a death animation. So let's just do a wait here. We'll go control wait 0 0.3 seconds then we're going to switch costumes to our death animation which is bat d this one here where he's all curled up this is why we picked this one because it's a perfect uh, it has all the costumes we need to make a really cool looking game all right so now we start falling so let's put that inside of forever. We're going to get stuck into a forever here basically until the clone gets deleted. So we're not going to get stuck here forever. But for a little bit, um, we're going to start falling and spinning right now. So we started upright, and now let's start spinning. Let's go to our motion blocks. We'll go turn 15 degrees. It doesn't matter if it's right or left. I'm going to go right. We're gonna now we're gonna start making our bats height the variable that that tr that checks how high our bats are. We're gonna start have them start falling now. So let's go to our variables. We'll go change bat height by minus four. That's gonna start them falling off the screen. And um, now we don't know how, how high we're going up. But even if we're if um, the bats are falling, they still might exit. Um, off the bottom of the screen if we're moving upward. So uh, depending on what direction we're moving on, we still need to check w whether the, whether they're on screen or not here. So we're going to test here to see if they're still on screen. And as soon as they leave the screen, we're going to delete them. We're going to delete them. So let's grab another if statement here from our control blocks. We're going to go, so we're inside the forever here. We're putting an if statement right below change bat height. And we're going to say if our y position is between those two values, we've already done the code here. So I'm just going to grab this from our other when I started to clone, the, clone this or statement here. I'm just going to make a duplicate of it rather than reinventing the wheel. And let's just drag it all the way down into this window. So now if we're visible on screen or if we're no longer visible on screen, then we're going to delete this clone. But before we do that, we're going to make a new bat because we don't want to run out of bats, right? And we don't want too many bats either. So we're going to create a clone of ourselves here and that will make a new bat appear probably off the screen and um, it'll appear uh, again in a second. So we're just going to start a new bat and there will just always be a fresh supply of bats to kill after we kill this one. Once we're done that, once we've made the new guy to replace us, we can go ahead and delete the old clone. And I think our bat bouncing should be working now. So let's give her a try. Let's maximize our screen here. Click the green flag. And let's see if we can find a bat to bash. There's boing. one. Boing. Nicely done. Boing. Nice. Now you can see that we're not getting any higher boing. because there's no new bats to hit. This is looking good though. Boing. All right, we're going to do something next that uh, has the potential be, to be a bit confusing. So I want to go over this carefully so that you guys understand what's happening. So the last act that the bat does when he gets killed, he goes through a death animation here. He falls off the screen. But the last thing that he does is he creates a new clone of himself. Why is he doing that? Let's have a look at the game here. So there's always three bats at the start of the game. I'm gonna bounce off of them right now, and you can see, Boing. you can see, you don't have much time to see, but Boing. one of the bats starts to die and fall off the screen. He immediately forms a new bat, so that there's always three bats at the bottom of the screen that you could potentially hit, which makes it a little harder for you to die frustratingly at the beginning of the game. Um, there's always going to be bats below you no matter what happens. But the point is that you need more new bats above you as well. So um, so we're, we have to clone bats twice here. We cloned one bat at the, at the bottom of the screen below us, and that's the guy who's dying who creates it for himself. But when that 
balance happens, we're also going to do a separate event that creates a new bat above us or potentially more than one bat above us that we can use to scroll higher and higher on the screen. And um, so we're going to do another event right now that um, that creates new bats every time that the old one was done. And so I, I just want you to understand why we're creating clones twice inside the code here. They're both doing a different function. The one sets the bats below us that have to keep being replaced as we kill them. But then we also need new bats above us so that there's always a new guy to get so we can go higher and higher and higher in the game. So we're done with this bit of code here. Um, I am going to uh, start a new block of code here that, that's um, when I receive cat bounce triggered. So we already have uh, one of these events inside our cat that tells the cat what to, what to do when it's been triggered, but we're gonna do another one for our bats here, cat bounce triggered. And uh, this is where we're gonna create a new guy above us. That's all we're doing. So let's get an if statement in here, if, now we're checking to see if the bat is a clone here because we're creating clones and we don't, we only want the master bat to be creating it. We don't want tons and tons of bats. We don't want all the existing bats to make clones of themselves. So we have infinite bats happening on the screen eventually. So let's check and see if the bat is the legit um, original bat by checking to see if his uh, clone is equal to zero, if, it, if that variable is equal to zero. So we'll say if, bat clone is equal to zero. We'll go to our variables and grab that bubble. Bat is clone is equal to zero, so we're not a clone. Then we need to set the height of our of ourselves before we um, before we create the clone. So let's go set bat height to. Let's grab a plus sign from our math operators here. So we're gonna do bat player height. So we want it above the player. We're gonna go player height plus 240, which should put him nice and high above us. And now we're gonna create a clone of ourselves. So let's go create clone of myself. There we go. Now, we need to check if this clone is gonna be a normal bat or a black bat, the evil black bats that make us go down on the screen. So let's go grab another if statement here and we'll flip a random coin. We're gonna say if pick random one to two is equal to two. I think I already have one of those code blocks somewhere else here. Let's see if I can find one. There it is. You can remake this if you like or, uh oh, picked the wrong part of it. I keep grabbing the wrong part. I have to grab it from the equal sign. There we go. So this is what we're looking for. If pick random one to two is equal to two. There we go. I'll just trash that. So we're flipping a coin. And if in fact that, co that coin comes up tails or whatever, we're gonna set that variable set bat is upside down to one. So that will tell the code that our bat is in fact upside down. We're gonna do something about that a little later, or I think we've already done that in the code. We're gonna change our bat height here. Change bat height by minus 30. So what we're doing here is we're making the black bats always a little lower than the gray bats. And that's because as you're plunging down, um, you, and if, if a gray bat and a black bat are occupying the same position, you wanna hit the gray bat first. It would be kind of unfair if you couldn't hit the gray bat because it was a black, black bat occupying the same space or even above it, right? You wanna keep the game moving forward and it would be kind of cheating to make a situation where you couldn't touch uh, a gray bat without t touching a black bat and messing yourself up and potentially getting to a situation where you're bouncing back and forth between the two bats like a ping pong ball too which could be dangerous. Okay, so once we've done that, we create a clone again. So we're gonna create an extra clone here. Let's go to our control blocks, create clone. So if we create a black bat, it's gonna be in addition to a gray bat. We don't want a black bat by himself because then of course we've got no place to go when our game is over. Once we're done all of this script at the very bottom of the if statement here, so inside the, the big if statement, but not inside the other one, we're gonna set that bat variable back to its starting position again. So let's go to variables. We're gonna set bat is upside down back 
to zero again so that the next time it can um, start off from its default position. Okay, that part's good. Um, one last thing I want to do before we go here, uh, before we move on, is um, we've got an extra little block down here that says when I started the clone. So let's do that. And I'll explain it in a second. Um, under control, when I started the clone, we've got a separate little thing here that's going to set a timer. We don't want infinite numbers of bats spawning here. And eventually our bats are going to get more and more crowded as time goes on here. Um, so we're going to set give these bats all an expiry date. We're going to tell them after 20 seconds. Let's go wait 20 seconds. And then we're going to delete the clone no matter what. And so this is going to stop our population of bats from getting so crowded that um, that the game gets impossible to um, to play because we just keep bouncing off of stuff. Um, you'll see in a second how this works. Actually, I'm going to tr I'm going to show you what this game works looks like both ways. So let's go ahead and test the game out. So here I go, bat, and you see there's a new bat above me. And now I've got a black, black bat here. Now we haven't coded the black bat to do something. You see they're a little lower than the gray bats. Now, you saw that nothing happened when I hit the black bat. That's because we haven't coded it yet. Let me just try. They do die though, which is nice. Whoa, I'm going down like crazy now. Beautiful. Okay, so you're getting an idea of how this works now. Um, so as we fall down, we get to the point where there's no bats at all, and we still don't have our death working yet. We're going to be doing that in a second. So um, let me show you what this looks like without the wait 20 seconds, without the bats expiring. And we'll play it again and have a look at what that looks like. You'll see that there'll be more and more bats on the screen as we play. So, um, let's see what happens as I start to fall down the screen now. Yeah, you can see that every time I go down and then go back up again, there's more bats on the screen. This is because we haven't given our bats a um, expiry date. And so, the population of them just keeps getting more crowded as we play, and eventually the game gets unplayable. Let's go back down again and see what's happening. We just keep creating clones. And there's more and more bats on the screen. That's why we decided to add this little function where um, where the bats expire after a while. And that'll keep their population down to a level. You see, I can't even get, even if I want to die here and get to the bottom of the screen, it's impossible to get through. Oh, I did it. It was almost impossible to get down to the screen to the point where, uh, where there wasn't uh, any more bats left. Okay, so um, you can see how that's a useful little bit of code. I'm going to reinstate that again. All right. So we still don't have anything happening when the black bats um, get hit. So we need a different piece of code for that. Um, and that, I believe, is over inside the cat. So let's go back to our cat code and have a look at that. So we have a cat bounce triggered event here, but we also need one for when we hit a black bat. So um, let's have a look at that. Okay, here it is. So when I receive cat bounce triggered down is what I need here. So let's go to our events. We'll grab uh, when I receive. And this is the event if we, if we um, touch a black bat. All we're gonna do is make our velocity a negative number. We're gonna reset our velocity back to, um, we're not gonna uh, uh, kind of bounce back at the same speed that we're moving up. We're just going to set our, our velocity with a specific number here. Let's go to our variables. We'll go set velocity to minus 19. We're going to make sure they're pointed in the right direction. So we'll go point in direction 90. And that will set us up so that they're falling straight down again. And we're going to play that sound boing. Start sound boing. Doesn't look like we've done much, but let's play the game now and see how that changes things. So 
first I have to hit a white bat. There we go. And now let's try hitting one of these black bats. Whoa! And you can see how it immediately ping pongs us off the bottom of the screen. So that's exactly what we want to have happen. We want um, to basically get shot in the opposite direction when we accidentally hit a black bat. Let's try that one more time. Let me try hitting it here. Whoop! Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can find another black bat here. Here we go. Oh, and it starts very quickly moving us down, and then we start accelerating. Things can fall apart very quickly in this game um, once you start moving down and you're moving quickly like that. Though every time you hit a bat, your your velocity is going to slow down again and start back from a base position again, and you're not going to have to um, be continuously going faster and faster. So it's um, definitely want to hit a bat on the way down. And it's going to be tricky once they start to expire. And you won't have too, too many of them to hit. But um, that's why we, we don't want the game to be easy, do we, guys? Okay, so all we have to do now is a death uh, situation now. So when we uh, touch the ground, we actually want to die here rather than going through the ground and plunging down into this white nothingness that we're in right now. So we've got to go back to our cat code and do some playing around with that to make this work. Um, all right, so we're back inside the main block of code for our cat. So it's this big, long, oh, it's not that long yet. We're going to make it longer, though. So this is where we have our directional keys and stuff like that in here. So underneath here, we need to do a little bit more coding. The first bit is another if statement. Let's go to our control block. We'll grab an if statement, and we're going to tell it, um, first of all, we want to update our score here. Right now, you see that our, our height climbed. It's still at zero because we're not changing that variable. We only want to change that variable when we achieve a new height. If you go up and then down and then back up again, we don't want that height climb to be changing. We want it to show basically our high score, our maximum height that we achieved. So we're only going to change this if our, um, if our player height is bigger than the last time that we changed that number. So let's go it, we're going to go if player height is greater than height climbed. Let's grab a greater than sign. So player height is greater than height climbed. So whatever that last number was, if we go higher than that, then we're going to start recording our numbers again. So the numbers will go up constantly until we go down and then up again, and then it'll stop. Um, and then we're going to set that variable here. So if it is, then we're going to set that height climb variable to player height. Player height has decimals, though. Look at this, minus 2560 point. It goes to like 12 digits. So we're going to round that number off so that it's a nice, clean, tidy number. We can use that round function inside our math operator. So we'll go round player height. So you can see how when I round it, this number goes from minus 2560 with digits. And I put it in here. Now it just becomes the actual number. If you want it to be a positive number for some reason, by the way, we're not going to do this today, but you know that you can also do the absolute value of that number. That's another little funky feature. And so now it becomes a positive number. Sometimes you need a number to be positive um, when you're comparing numbers to each other. So that's an, another interesting function. But we're just going to use the round for now. Let's trash that absolute value. Um, so we're going to set height climbed to that new number, which is going to be rounded off. And so you can see we have a nice clean number here at the top that represents how high we got in the game. When we go down, the number stops going up. And it only starts going up again when we get to a new height in the game. There we are up at 800 meters or feet or whatever unit you're using. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Had to pull my headphones off again. <laughs> Hard to get out of that habit. So we're back inside the cat code now. Um, so there's actually two spots. This is where it gets a little bit complicated, but our, our death actually has to happen in two parts here. Firstly, let's go back to our city code here again. Um, I'm going to hide my sky for a second here. Where did my city go? Here it is. So I'll make that reappear. Okay, so um, my city here, my, my cat's going to drop down. It's, gonna, it's always going to be fixed in the middle of the screen, but the sky is actually going to come up and rush up to meet us here, right around this spot here. This is the spot where we decide we're going to die, because we don't want the camera to keep moving the sky up here so that we keep going through it. So at this point here, the code has to decide that we're dead. 
And at that point, the camera has to stop moving degrees because we want the cat to keep moving down the screen, but we don't want this to rush upwards anymore. We need this frozen in place. So we have to kind of, at that point, change the way that we handle the movement and then continue going down until we hit the ground here. So um, we're gonna do that. We're gonna have to go back and revise some of our code to fix that a little bit. Let's go back to our cat again. Um, I'm gonna, I wanna grab this block called, so we're inside the main block of code in our cat. And there's a block here that says change player height by velocity. That's what's making um, us stick to the camera. Our height variable is changing based on how fast we're moving up or down on the screen. I'm gonna pull this loose right now and just take everything below it and set it aside for a moment so that I can wrap some stuff around this variable change here. I'm gonna have this only happen under certain circumstances and not do this anymore if um, we're too low on the map, if we actually reach a point where, where we've died because we, we're, we're gonna hit the ground. So let's grab an if else statement, control if else. And I'm gonna put this change player height down into the else condition. So basically if we're not too low, we're just gonna continue moving the normal way. But if we're too low, meaning our player height has reached less than minus 175, that's the number that will put us down to this spot here on the screen, a little bit lower than where we started, right? Remember we started up here at 100. So when we get down to here, we're at minus 175, and then we'll know that we're doomed. We're dead at that point. There's, there's no more bats to hit. So where's my if statement? I have, oh, I gotta go back to my cat here again. So if, let's grab a less than sign. And we'll say player height. If player height is less than minus 175, we move below that magic line. Oh, I entered the wrong number there. So if we've fallen below that magic line, we're gonna keep falling. We're gonna change our Y here, motion change y instead of changing our height so we're no longer functioning within the world of being fixed by this camera we're just going to change our y we're going to keep falling down at the velocity that we're falling at here so we're going to change y by velocity but our camera is not going to be following us anymore so let's try that out here uh, we'll pop that back into our forever and we can put all the rest of the code down below it and attach that below still inside the forever so if you see this structure, there's the if else, and then just, we just carry on with our direction keys. Let's try that out now and see what it looks like. So you see that once I hit the ground, or once I get down low enough, the ground oh. stops rushing up at us now. Oh. Let's go up one more and then I'll fall. So the ground just oh. stops, it freezes at that point. And now we can um, we can basically do a death animation when we hit the ground here. Okay, so let's go down to the very bottom of this block of code, still inside the forever loop. We're gonna add one, one last if statement to our game here. And that's checking our Y position again. So we're still falling, even though the camera's not tracking yet. So when we reach around this point, the bottom of the screen, that's when we're actually gonna die. So we just keep falling. Um, there's not, nothing we can do to save ourselves at this point, but we're just gonna continue that animation so that he actually lands on the ground. So if Y position, let's go uh, grab a less than sign. And we're gonna say Y position, our current Y. We're not looking at our altitude anymore. We're just looking at where we are on the screen. So we're gonna go Y position is less than minus 140. Remember the screen is goes down to minus 180. So we're, that puts us right around here where we wanna die. And now let's go start sound. Bonk, which is this sound. Now you can load up that sound if you don't have it or you can pick any other sound if you want. It sounds to me like a good uh, landing sound. Then we're gonna go switch costume to our death costume, which is this one. Ow, and it's actually appropriately called ouch. Let's go to our looks menu here, switch costume to ouch. And now we just wanna kill the game.
So we're going to stop all the other scripts in the sprite. We just want to basically kill the, stop the cats moving. We can keep the bats moving though, because um, uh, we, we, we don't want, we, we still want the bats to be flying up ahead when the game is over. And we also um, don't want that sky to disappear. The sky is made of clones, right? You can see how when I hit the stop button, the sky disappears. And so it's a little jarring to have the game end with stuff disappearing. So we're just gonna kill all, but to destroy everything here, we have to do it in two different stages. Let's go to our control blocks. We'll go grab this stop all block. We don't wanna stop everything because again, it'll get rid of our clones. But we're gonna go stop other scripts in this sprite. Then we'll stop everything, the animations and stuff for this cat, everything else here. But we also wanna stop, once we're done that, we wanna stop this script as well. Now we couldn't stop this script first because then that we wouldn't get to the point. Notice this has, has no connector blocks at the bottom. It has to be the last thing you do because it's not gonna continue running the script when you've already stopped it. So we have to stop other scripts first and then stop this script. So we stop the cat, but everything else is still running, which will keep some continuity going in our game as we're moving along here. All right, one last test here to see if this is working. And I think we're in good shape. So let's try playing our game. Oh, there we go, bouncing. Now I'm gonna deliberately kill myself, boink, and we land on the ground and our poor sad cat. Now, if you wanted a game over screen or something to appear here, you could do that. You see our bats still continue to move. Our sky is still in place here. It's quite a nice little um, ending. So you, eventually our bats expire after 20 seconds though, and then we're left with nothing. Nothing but sadness, we're dead. Okay, so basically that's it for this game. Um, I think it's running quite nicely. There's lots of good opportunities to remix this game. You can change the graphics on the ground level here. When you create a, gr a new ground level sprite, make sure that it has transparency in it so you can see the sky behind it. Otherwise, it's gonna be very jarring when you land. Have a look at this sprite. You actually took an existing sprite back, uh, scratch background and actually just physically cut out the background. I did this in Photoshop, but you can even do it inside the sprite editor here. If you get in really close, you could delete blocks by drawing little rectangles like this, and that can help you get rid of the space. Um, that's probably not um, necessarily something you wanna do, but um, that's an option for you. Um, what else can you do? So definitely you can mix up the sound effects. Um, you can go over my friends at freesound.org where there's lots of great free sound effects. And if you wanted to, you could do like a plunging cartoon sound or something like that. It was a little more funny for the falling sound. You can definitely make better bad guys as well. But remember they have to have four different costumes, two for flapping their wings or flying or making them look like they're moving while they're up in space. It could be little guys on a rocket ship or whatever, but you wanna have some animation to them. So you need those two sprites and you need a third sprite for when they get hit and a fourth sprite for when they're falling basically. So you might have to modify some of the existing sprites to make this work. You could do this with UFOs or, um, or flying cows or almost anything you wanted to. Do something that makes me laugh. So go ahead and remix this. Save this in the remix room, which you can find um, on my website. Um, or you can just search for Mr. Tomek on Scratch and find me there. There is a remix um, studio, basically, that where you can save your files into. And um, just click on the link on my website on the lessons page for this uh, lesson and um, save it in there. And then you're off to the races. So I'm very excited to see what you guys do to remix this game. In the meantime, um, I will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.